Hey guys, I'm back. It's been a really long time since I've made a video. I apologize for that. And I've been watching the YouTube channel and answering comments, which is really awesome. And um, I'm, I somehow, with the videos that I have up there, I'm already over 600 subscribers. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, it's my hope that uh, I'm able to offer some artists and uh, people who are interested in art some value on YouTube. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Anyway, today we're going to take a traditional painting that I just finished uh, that you see here on the screen. I want to show you the original. It's back here. That's an oil painting on canvas and uh, so it's still wet. I've got to be careful with that. Um, but a, a problem that I've run into that I've been trying to address for a long time and the reason that I want to share this video is I try to find somewhere to put this thing without um, messing it up. So the reason that I want to make this video is one of the problems that I've had uh, with creating a traditional painting and then making prints of it because you know once you sell that original that's it I'd like to make some limited edition canvas prints for people uh, to offer to people at a way less of a cost than an original painting um, but when you do that and you photograph it we're lucky now that we have digital SLRs and we have things like Photoshop and Lightroom we can get really high quality reproductions of these images um, but one of the problems that I've had to address is one how to get the the tone and color to translate into the print and the sharpness um, and then two how to get rid of the canvas texture because I want to print this on a canvas so if I have canvas texture and I'm printing an image that has canvas texture onto canvas texture uh, you can see how there's I just I don't love it so I've been looking for a long time for a way to uh, address that and uh, that's what I'm going to be working on today so uh, and I photographed this with a Canon 80D and the way that I did this I'm not going to make a video showing you the process of how I did it but I set the camera up on a tripod I took the painting outdoors into some indirect light you don't want to shoot in like this really bright sunlight um, once I shot that, I brought it indoors. I shot it in raw. It's important that you shoot your images in raw so that you have more, a, a, a wider range of uh, adjustments can be made to it and you have a much higher quality, higher depth image. Um, so shoot in raw. And then I brought it into Lightroom, which again, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but just some editing in Lightroom has gotten me to this point where I have it cropped and I have the colors in the in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. I'm gonna to go to File, New, and I'm going to make a new document that is 36 inches by 20 inches at a resolution of 300, and you wanna change your bit depth to 16-bit. I'm able to shoot 16-bit color depth with my SLR camera, so why not take, we were gonna make use of that same um, color space. We're going to go ahead and click create and now we have a new blank document that's exactly 20 by 36 inches. Now we're going to go ahead and take our image, drag it over, drop it onto here and we're going to resize it. We are going to have to enlarge it a bit to get it to the the right size and that would be the disadvantage between uh, not having an image scanned but it you're going to need a big, giant, high-quality drum scanner to scan images like this. And that's great if you have the money to spend on that type of thing, but um, you'd have to take it into a professional, and they would have to do that for you. And we just don't have the time or the, the resources to do that. So we shot it with a DSLR, and you can see that I had to expand the canvas. I had to make it bigger um, so that it, it fits that 20 was 20 by 36 uh, space. So we got a 20 by 36 inch document now at a resolution of 300 and it's an RGB image and it's 16 bit color. Okay, now we could just 
print you have this printed on canvas and it would look fine but there are some things some fine-tuned details that we want to address um, to get the highest quality image that we can now what we're going to do is go to image and we're going to go to canvas size and I click OK uh, it's going to increase the size of the image by about an inch and a half all the way around so I increased it by um, three inches all the way around and it's an inch and a half on each side now again we go to that background layer and we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill it with black now the reason that I do this is because sometimes when people buy a canvas print um, they don't want to frame it right away but they're excited to hang it so I like to have the black around the sides it just looks a little bit sharper you can do a gallery wrap um, but my my framer doesn't do that so when they stretch it on a stretcher bar um, I don't have the option of a gallery wrap a gallery wrap is those really nice thick uh, canvas panels where it's the image goes all the way around the sides or you can have black around the sides and there's no staples visible and those are meant to uh, not have to put a frame on at all the next step is to go in and start making some adjustments to the color space and one of the things uh, a lot of this was done already in Lightroom so it's already in the ballpark of where I want it to be uh, first what I like to do is go and make a copy of the image so that we have the original down below okay um, and when I zoom in one of the the biggest issues that I'm running into again is that t canvas texture now that canvas texture is great that we got that much detail in the photograph but that canvas texture is going to be reproduced on canvas again which is like double canvas texture and that's not the ideal situation okay so first we'll do some global adjustments meaning we'll address the entire uh, the entire image so I'm gonna go to uh, image adjustments and I'm gonna go to desaturate I'm gonna go ahead and go image adjustments levels and I'm gonna take a look at my levels and a lot of people will use curves and we'll get into that a little bit um, but for right now we're gonna go ahead and give ourselves some nice deep blacks because you can see here by the histogram that we don't quite get to black so we're gonna go ahead and increase that a little bit this all looks really good so we have a nice range of tones here uh, and you can see before and after it's subtle but it's a little bit of a thing you could change this to soft light and by changing it to soft light you can see it takes the uh, the higher contrast uh, values and it lays them over the top which gives us gives us some nice clarity and sharpness but I think it is a little bit too much so what I like to do now is take this and peel it back so actually if you go down to zero that's what it looked like and if we kind of increase it a little bit and just creep up a little bit at a time we're getting some of the advantages of the adjustments we made without without making it too crazy so it's kind of like the volume slider you do something to the entire thing and then you go ahead and adjust your volume slider the next thing we're gonna do is make a copy of everything so we're gonna make a new layer merging all the layers below it onto a new one and that's control alt shift E or command option shift E if you're on a Mac and we're gonna go ahead and make a copy of the entire image so here you can see there's nothing changing because that's the whole image okay now let's address some of the color issues we're gonna go to image we're gonna go to adjustments and we're gonna go to color balance and I like to go through all of the different uh, tones so we got shadows midtones and highlights and you can adjust these one at a time so if I wanted to take uh, the shadows and I wanted to cool them down I can go that way if I wanted to warm them up I can go the other way now I what I like to do is kinda go all right, I like the way this is looking, but then it gets to be too much. So I'm going to back it off, back it off. And I go the other way. I'm, eh, I don't really like the way that that looks. So I think I'm going in this direction just a tiny bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see the before and after here. Before, after, before, after. Do you see that purple and the blue that's kind of going away there? So I definitely think that that is another half step in the right direction control option or control alt shift e command option shift e if you're on a mac 
we have a new layer here. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments. We're going to go to Hue Saturation. And we are going to increase the saturation. We are going to increase the contrast. Kind of darken it. I'm not going to brighten that too much. I'm going to darken these shadows a bit. So we have this like nice, really vibrant color situation here. Okay, so you're going to hold Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, and press the layer mask button. So what you just did here was created a layer mask that's filled with black. And now I'm going to take white on my brush. And my brush is set to zero hardness. And I'm going to turn this down a bit. And I am on a Cintiq, so I could paint over this if I want to. Um, but when I'm doing these adjustments at the end, I kind of just, I just use the mouse for this stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do now is start to paint with white. If we take a look here at the mask, you see that little little thingy right there. Um, what I've actually done is I've just increased the saturation in the fire. You can go through, and this is called dodging and burning in photography. You can darken and lighten parts of an image. That is called a local adjustment versus a global adjustment. When we adjust the whole image, it's a global adjustment. When we adjust small parts of it, it's a local adjustment. Control, Alt, Shift. E. We're going to go ahead and make the whole thing. So what I've been looking for for a long time is a way to eliminate this canvas texture. So you go to filter, you go to noise, and then you go to median. And what median is going to do, it's going to take your image and it's going to blend the textures out. It's going to almost look like it it puts this weird filter over the whole thing. So if I go two, it's not quite getting there. Four is closer. Five will be okay too. Let's just let's go with five. We can always fix it later. So we're gonna go ahead and do this median blur. Okay, so what the median blur does is it takes that texture and it kind of like blurs the texture without completely changing the image. So before you saw this and after you see this. So you wouldn't want to keep it like this because then you're giving people a, a canvas print that's kind of uh, it's not really looking that good, right? So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to turn that volume down just a tad. So now we're going to go Command Option Shift E again, and we're going to go to Image Adjustments Desaturate. Then we're going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Now this is a photography trick. What High Pass does is it takes this, uh, takes this grayscale image and it makes almost like uh, it, it sharpens your edges. So the more that I do with this High Pass, the more of the image that you're going to see. Now when you get to a certain point, it starts to glow and it starts to get hazy like that. We definitely don't want that. We're looking just enough to see sharpening in those edges without distorting. We're going to change the blend mode of this to either soft light or hard light. Hard light is going to do a bit more of an extreme change and soft light is going to do a little bit less. So I, in this case I usually use soft light but in this case I'm going to go with hard light. So now we're going to go ahead and go Command or Control, Alt, Shift, E. And then we're going to go ahead and go to Filter, Sharpen. And we're going to do an Unsharp Mask. Okay, and then this is going to give us that sharpness back again. But hopefully, and that when you do the sharpness, you want to create a ladder like this. Okay, so a ladder meaning or a stairs where it goes up, 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 up like that. Okay, so we're going to bring the threshold down a little bit. Still maintain our stair step. And let's see, before, after, before, after. So we're getting our sharpness back, but we're also in the process, we lost some of that texture. So let's go back now. Let's strip this away. I want to stay in at 100% so you can see 
what we're doing here. We're going to strip this away from beginning to the end. This is now color corrected. It's it's lost some of that texture from the canvas. You know, I might go back in and touch some parts of this up. But you just got a nice amount of detail here. And the color, I think, is so much better. Like, it was very pink and purple. Uh, and I got some of that original color back into it. I might take this and peel it back. So even in the most extreme situations, I've got a little bit of that texture. Like, I don't want it to be super, super, super smooth. You see the before and after right there? And everything. Now we're going to create a mask. And we're going to retrieve some of the detail by just painting with black. So you create a mask after doing that filter and then you go, okay, I don't want that extra smooth stuff going on in here. This is like where I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to see some of that canvas texture. I'm gonna turn this up so it works a little bit faster. There's a there's a trade-off here. I'm gonna have to see the canvas texture in order to see the detail. Um, so I appreciate you watching again. Sorry it's been such a long time since I had a video. Hopefully you found that helpful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something, and then they say click it, and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.